welcome back to Kirsty Colouring Sketch. If you're new here, please do consider subscribing and if you're returning, welcome back. So today I'm going to colour in this book. It's one of my favourites, just for the paper in it is really good. Really nice to work with watercolour in this book. It is the Coloriage Wild and this is the number five. So this one was available on Amazon at the time I purchased it. I think it might have been Amazon France. Um, because she's a French artist, Emmanuel Collin, um, they get released over the first, I do believe. Um, so just check that out. It's not much for shipping, um, not to the UK anyway. So I'm going to do this little cute page. I think it's a fennec fox, this one. Um, <laughs> not very good with my animals, but I think it is. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to tape the border off because I want to create um, a border with the watercolour. So the masking tape I'm going to use is this one. It is, I don't know if you can see, Tessa brand and it's a sensitive low tack tape. So hopefully we won't have any ripped, um, any ripped paper when we're done. Hopefully. Let's just rip that off. So I am going to create a little border all the way around with this tape. I think I'll try and get it the same size all the way around, about that much I think. I'm thinking. Trying to get it nice and straight. <laughs> nice and straight and lined up. Ugh. There we go, and one on the bottom. Let's see, oh, I've took my nail varnish off with a tape. Look at that. Which finger and nail has that come off? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm always doing wacky things with my nail varnish. I'm going to make this one a bit lower because I don't want to, I want to be able to colour that tail, the end of that tail. Think about there, might be okay. It's just a little teeny tiny bit on the end. So that's where I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna run my finger along the edges to make sure it is running flat. So we don't get any watercolour seeping underneath there, hopefully. And then I'm just gonna pop a piece of paper underneath just to make sure that nothing's running underneath to the next page. That might stick to that actually, but it'll be okay because it'll come back up. It'll come back up. So I'm going to wet some of these paints. I'm using three palettes because I thought I'll mix up the more colours I've got the better. So I've got the Air Teaser 36 set. Not clean my palette. So I might dip into some of them and re-wet them. Um, but these are these colours. They are swatched out here. There's a nice, quite a nice array of colours in these. I do quite like these Air Teaser ones. Um, and then we've got the Prima watercolours. So I've got two of these palettes. I've got the Pastel Dreams and the Decadent Pies. The Decadent Pies is one of my favourites. It's got such a nice, these two blues here, they're so rich and even the greens, it's just a beautiful, beautiful set. And then we've got the Pastel Dreams set, which is pastels, you guessed it. Another lovely set. So I think there'll be some nice colours in here for the florals. The little bit of florals we've got on here, there's not many, but there is some. So they might not be on camera when I'm colouring because there's lots to get on screen but I have got a cloth at the side of me to wipe off, dab off any excess. So I've got a bit of tissue paper and I've got a little sponge. I've not decided if I'm going to use that or not yet but it is there in case I decide I want to. So I'm going to just drop some water on some of these colours because I think I'm just going to dip in to lots and lots of gorgeous tones and I'm not quite decided what colours I want to go for so I'm just like let's just wet them all so they're all ready to go so I'm, the brushes I'm using are the Princeton Neptune watercolour brushes I've got a size 12 and a size 4 I'll be using the size 12 for all the background area and the size 4 um, for the details and to get into these little Little bits because that's going to be a bit tricky getting into the all them areas. I really should get myself a little spray bottle to wet all these watercolours. It'd be a lot easier than trying to dab water on with the um, 
brush but still gets the job done <laughs> if you can hear children in the background it's the weekend i'm filming so all the kiddies are at home i've just took my daughter to swim in this morning she's had a swimming lesson this morning they've all been fed they've had the lunch daddy is in the house as well so i've not just abandoned them don't worry <laughs> not abandoned them although they will probably come in a million times because they never ask daddy for anything they always come and find me but hey ho <laughs> i'm sure if you're a parent you know that you know that you know all about that right so pop that to the side and get this a bit more in central in frame so the background colors this fox is going to be like a nice um orangey tones so i'm thinking maybe greens for the background so i'm just going to start dipping into some greens but first i'm going to wet the page so my children are making some wacky noises i'm going to pre-wet all the page a little bit so it's all a bit damp i'm not bothered about going over the whiskers with um the watercolor because i will go in with some sort of white pencil um to draw those whiskers back in so we're not worried about that it's very messy watercolor when i do it <laughs> very messy but i love it i love it right so let's find some greens i'm gonna go in oh with this one this one is from the decadent pies you can see here the decadent pies it's a lovely look at that green look at it i love it so i'm going to start off at the bottom i believe this is a shoulder here i'm going to dip into some green from the Arteza set as well this lighter shade being very careful around this little fox's face his little mouth could have done with getting my clips my little clips let's try and get in the center of that there that sort of turned into the same shade did not it when it's merged together and it sort of looks the same so i want to Add a different colouring, but I don't know what colour to do. I'm going to pop this green down here, firstly. Pop that colour down there. I don't know if I want to put some yellow tones in. What do you think yellow will be like? With green, will it be too, too much? They hold a lot of water, these brushes. I sometimes forget just how much water they hold. Just suck a bit up and <laughs> suck it up. That's the ear. We don't want to go over the ear with green. I think that's a little ear there. I'll just pop that out there. A lot of these pages, when I've done them in the past, I do them as a time lapse. I thought I'd come on and just show you the messy process because <laughs> I'm not really that good with watercolours but I just like I like to play around with them that's why I tend to do time lapses so you don't see the messy bits <laughs> but I thought why not why not so I'm just going in with this nice it's like a I can't describe the colour but I'm just going to bring it in here look at that look how vibrant that is look at it dip into my water now clean the brush off and just try and blend it into that green it's gorgeous such a gorgeous color i'm just gonna get that off there get away it's so pigmented just keeps running into it all right let's get the cloth Get off. <laughs> Get off. I 
I don't think I'm going to go for green leaves on this page. I think I'm going to go for your reds, yellows, oranges. Sort of. I'm going for all the autumn colours lately. I am. Let me dab that off. I don't like how it's gone that muddy colour. Okay, I'll get some green back in down here. I don't like that either, that's worse. <laughs> Shall I, I'll let that dry and come back to it. So I'm going to pop some of this colour over the other side as well. So over here. And little foxy. Stabbing, but it goes down there too harshly. It's running everywhere. I keep forgetting how good this paper is. It's like proper watercolor paper, so it doesn't soak in like your normal coloring pages would suck the water up. This doesn't, it stays on top. I keep forgetting. Let's get that off. See, look what it's doing. It's going crazy. It's going crazy. Get off. <laughs> Get off. Might do a few of that effect with this actually and just lift some of the colour. Oh, dearie me. Dearie, dearie me. Some more green up at the top, I think. I'm quite very quiet now. It's my concentration base. It's me. Oh no, this watercolour's got a mind of its own today. That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to lift some of the colour down here now. at the top it's looking too washed out so I'm gonna try and get some more pigment down Some both off. And I think now I'm just going to clean up my edges. So, where the fox has got some paint on him, I'm just going to find a clean place on the cloth and dab it up. <laughs> I'm going to leave the leaves. I'm not going to clean them up because I'm going to go in with similar colours anyway. I'm going to clean this up what's on her face. Let's 
so push it away. So I'm going to leave the background at that, at the minute. I'm going to go on with some nice colours for the fox now. I'm going to start off with a lighter colour. I just thought I would come and do a bit of this tail on real time. As you can see, I'm doing it all in watercolour. I've no clue what I'm doing, guys. I'm just winging it. But I thought I would go for a loose, um, a loose watercolour effect. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm sort of just creating some hair strokes with brush. I am using the size 4 for this. So it's the round Princeton Neptune size 4. You can get these on Amazon. I'll link them down below. But I have just been following the shading and the grayscale that's already been put in there. So the darker areas, I'm going to go in with a really um, a dark shade of this. So it's similar to this up here. Um, and maybe even a bit of brown on the end of the tail. We'll see. Let's just wipe a bit of that off. I just thought I would do a bit of it in real time. Then you can see it's a bit slower what I'm doing. But I'm just being really, really loose with a paintbrush, really loose. I'm even leaving some white areas, so you can see here on the fox I've left some white areas. That's acting as like, almost like if you coloured with coloured pencils and you'd leave a lighter area for a highlight. That's sort of what I've left in there is a little highlight here and there. I do watch a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of, um, watercolour artists on youtube but i never pick any <laughs> anything up from it i never have a go along with them should i say you know when they do tutorials i never follow along with anything i just watch and then try and retain some information but i don't think i've really retained any but <laughs> who knows so i'm going to put a bit more darkness at the top as well where we've got that um bit of a more heavier gray scale so we say going on up there let's dip directly into that color but i always have my cloth at the side of me because if you pick too much paint off up on your brush you can quickly dab it down at the side of your i really like the loose the loose look Lots of different shades and tones in here as well. Let's 
So I think now I'm going to go in with a bit. No, I'm going to allow that to dry. Then I'm going to go in with some more dark at the bottom of the tail. I think that's the best bit or else it's going to start running. So I'm just going to define the outline of the tail a bit. Turn your own to get a better angle. So it's similar to when you're doing the hair strokes when you're doing when you're colouring her with colour pencils. I'm gonna outline this bit here as well little bit just loosely can flick some bits out so it looks like the tail's even extra fluffy do some little flicks coming off the end of the tail like that There we go. I think I'm gonna go in with some black now or some really really dark brown for his little his little nose and round his eyes, but I've got to be careful, really careful with the black. Where's my black hair to use a paint? Can't tell which one's black. Um which one's black? Is that it? Let me test on it. Yeah, that one's black. So I'm gonna try and get his little eyes in. Without it going very wrong. I'm going to leave him a little highlight. It's gone a little bit thicker than I'd like. I think I probably needed a thinner paintbrush that but it'll do it'll do let's get the nose in my worry yeah leave some oh I'll draw him in with a um a white gel pen actually the little highlights on the nose get these little dots in there I'm gonna draw the whiskers in later with a white I think I'm going to get some brown now. There's a really nice brown tone in this palette, which is it Decadent Prize. It's this sort of, this one here, it's gorgeous. Look at it. I'm going to put that in, some of that in the end of the tail. easier for me to see. As well as it being on the tip of the tail, I am going to, oh, just put some on the skin, let's get that off. If you do this, just get your clean, clean your brush off, get clean water on it, wet it and then dab. 
God, I don't come on. I'm going to put a few of the brown little lines at the top as well. Just a few little ones. Like that. You can hear iPads and things, it's my daughters playing. <laughs> playing on their iPads. There. I think I'll leave my little fox like that. Possibly put a few lines around the face, around the eyes. I'm tweaking now, I'm tweaking. Stop it, Kirsty. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Just want to soften this line a little bit. There. Right, so now I'm going to move on to something else. What should we colour now? I'm thinking the leaves, because the leaves is going to be nice and quick and easy. The leaves, I'm going to go for some nice ochres, greens bit ready brownie type of colours.
So some of that was time-lapsed and some in real time, just to give you a little feel for how I was doing it. Um, it took me an hour and a half to do this page. Um, that's why a little bit was sped up. Um, but I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, I don't like the skin, but that's all right. That's all right. I really, really love the fox. Um, I love how he turned out. I did just go in with a soft pastel for the whiskers at the end, so I will have to fix that with a fixed tiver else it'll just rub off. Um, but everything was watercolour. A little bit of um, white gel pen in the eyes for some of the highlights. But that's it, and I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, you could probably see in some of the um, time lapse or even just the real time when I was struggling a bit with the background to start with, but I really love how it's turned out. Um, I like to put these borders on, it just makes everything look crisp and nice around the edges. Um, but the favourite bit about this page is definitely the fox for me. I really, really love how that came out. Really, really love it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching. Please do hit the thumbs up, drop me a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.